Hi there, and welcome to Canceling COVID. I'm Tanya Rivens. We come with you to share information about this relentless attack on our community, that thing called COVID. We're still at it, and we want to help you protect your family and, of course, your community as we continue to talk about this issue that's impacting our community in so many ways. I want to say thank you to our sponsors, Mecklenburg County Public Health. You can go to mecnc.gov. That's mecnc.gov if you need additional information. In addition to that, you can call 980-314-9400, 980-314-9400 if you have any questions. Also, thank you to Groundwater Solutions, uh, Dr. Tracia Black and the entire group over there working so hard in the community. Genesis Project is also a part of that organization, and they continuously work in the community. Community. Well, one of the biggest, um, biggest things to happen this past week is, of course, the vaccine is now available for children ages five and older. Uh, they are able and eligible to get the vaccine. And that is really another game changer as we continue to deal with the pandemic. According to the CDC, the vaccinations will protect 28 million more American children from what's become one of the 10 leading causes of death in children in the U.S. And that's pretty big because, you know, the lose lives is such a tough, tough, difficult thing. We've lost more than 700,000. And now it looks like the attack apparently is on our young people, our future. So uh, elementary kids started to get the Pfizer in Charlotte as early as Wednesday. I know StarMed was allowing people to sign up. And when I was talking to them last, they had as many as 2,000 who had already pre-registered. And it comes as a, at a time where uh, pediatric virus rates are increasing in Mecklenburg County and children younger than 18 made up 27% of COVID cases between October 14th and the 27th. So a short time span there and 27% of the COVID cases, that's quite a spike. So what we've done today, it's a little different, but certainly very informative. It's a Q and A, someone here to answer the questions you may have uh, to address any of your concerns over the pediatric COVID-19 vaccine. And I see as you're starting to hop on, please share this because this is a conversation with one of the most distinguished and most knowledgeable professionals in the business. It's Dr. Mina Ahmed, and she's a pediatric infectious disease expert and an epidemiologist. So she's very well qualified, very much aware of what it is. And she's a part of Atrium Health's Levine Children's Hospital. So she's going to share a whole lot of information, vital information that you can use and share as well. So as you hop on, please share this so more people can get this information out. So now, uh, Dr. Amina Ahmed, taking questions and answers. Thank you all again so much for joining us this morning. Um, we are joined by Dr. Amina Ahmed. She is our pediatric infectious disease Dr. expert Amina. and epidemiologist at Atrium Health for Being Children's. And, and she's here to answer to some that questions that again. you all this have is a, a following media, the approval from um, the CDC session that was held that allowed people um, to ask questions. The, vac the Pfizer vaccine for five to 11 year olds. And with the news that the Department of Health and Human Services is also fully approved. So we are in, uh, in an exciting time where we now have vaccines eligible for this new age group. So I will turn it over to Dr. Ahmed just to give a brief overview of what does this mean and what to expect and why this is an exciting milestone. And then we'll open it up to questions from the media. Great. Thank you. You can hear me? Yep. Yeah, great. So first of all, as Savannah said, this is amazingly exciting. Um, I can't believe that we're here already. So December of 2020 is when we started vaccinating healthcare workers and, and the elderly. And now we're before December 2021, we're already vaccinating ch children down to age five, which is an amazing uh, amount of progress that we've made. As I've said before, children continue to play a big part in the COVID pandemic. As we've seen over the last year, we've identified that children actually do account for a large proportion of the cases overall and children being tested, a substantial portion are testing positive, whether they're symptomatic or they're exposed and asymptomatic, they're still testing positive. So at this point, we do know that children make up about 20 to 25% of cases in the last month, especially with the Delta surge. That's a huge proportion considering that children under 18 make up 20 to 25% of the US population overall. So to bring this vaccine to children down to five to 11 year, years of age is just an amazing accomplishment. And, 
And the reason that we're excited about it is number one, is that again, children play a big role in the COVID pandemic. So vaccinating children will prevent infections in them, will prevent hospitalizations, will prevent MISC, the multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children, which occurs mostly in this five to 11 year old age group. Um, and then more importantly, also it will stop the spread of the virus. So we, we have learned through the pandemic that um, not only do children play a big role, but they're actually silent spreaders as opposed to the super spreaders. A large proportion of children, especially in this age group, are asymptomatic. So they're asymptomatic and they're the, the youngest group that they can't take care of themselves. They need people around constantly. So you're not going to be able to isolate from the five or six or seven year old. And so then they account for a lot of the spread in households of COVID-19, even though they may be asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic. So for those reasons, we're excited to be able to vaccinate this population and prevent further spread of COVID-19. Great overview, Dr. Ahmed, thank you. Um, we do have a couple of questions, so we'll turn it over to the media. Uh, Claire with WFAE. Hi, thanks for doing this. Um, I just wanted to check um, Dr. Ahmed to see what you would tell parents who say kids don't get very sick from COVID, um, why should I get my child vaccinated? So we are very thankful in pediatrics. We were very thankful at the beginning of the pandemic and continue to be that children don't get extremely sick. However, we do know that children can get sick and, and the most severe manifestation in children at least seems to be this multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children. And, and then the other severe manifestation is in the adolescent. So the 12 to 17 year olds get very sick. They're just basically like adults. So they're at high risk for getting ill, ending up in the intensive care unit. So I wanna point out, even though hospitalizations are not common for pediatric patients, they do occur. And 30% of those hospitalizations, 30% of those children end up in the intensive care unit. I also wanna point out that although multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children is is not common, it does impact about one in every 1,000 to one in every 2,000 children that get COVID-19. And we know that just because we know there's 6 million cases of COVID-19 and about 5,000 cases of MISC that have been reported in the US. So, so that's sort of the ratio that we're expecting. So that means children can in fact get multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children. Those children largely end up in the intensive care unit and a substantial portion of them, 50% are gonna end up with some cardiac or heart um, issue related to this multi-system inflammatory syndrome. Again, fortunately, most recover, but, but that's with a lot of intervention. So you don't want your child to be one of those that ends up with multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children. And yes, children are mildly ill, um, but they can be severe illness. So we want to prevent that. And then further than that, children are mildly ill, asymptomatic, but can spread the infection. So they'll continue to be responsible for the spread of infection to adults, to the immunocompromised, to the elderly, and to be able to break this cycle and end this pandemic, we really have to get up to close to 70% vaccination or immunity at the same time. And we're not gonna be able to accomplish that without vaccinating children. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. We have another question from Chloe with WCNC. Hi, thank you so much. Just wondering, when is Atrium Health going to start these vaccinations? How can parents make appointments? Where should they expect to go for these types of appointments? Thank you. Yes, that's a great question. And we, um, because of the emergency use authorization that occurred last Friday, uh, shipments of vaccine were sent out to various health departments and from there to local health departments and to various facilities. So you will be able to make an appointment at, at Atrium facilities very shortly, and you can go on to My Atrium Health, and that's a great place to start. And then you can also look for further information on the Atrium Health website slash, slash vaccines as well, COVID vaccines. Um, and so that way you'll be able to schedule through your provider. The nice thing is, because we've already learned from what happens with adult vaccines, because we've learned to be more proficient, we have now with this, with the rollout of this vaccine, been able to plan ahead, make sure that this is gonna be, these vaccines are gonna be available through your primary care provider, um, as well as we're gonna be holding events. So we're gonna be able to roll this out much more smoothly. Although I think we did a great job with the adult vaccines uh, much more smoothly than we were before. 
Just to clarify really quickly, there are like a few other providers in the Charlotte area that are starting tomorrow. If someone, you know, has a primary care or pediatrician with Atrium, you know, can they expect that speed too, that it would be sometime this week or next week? Can you give any more of a specific timeline? Um, Claire, I'm going to ask you to jump in there tomorrow. <laughs> would that be a I think we should be able to be offering it this week, definitely, but the specific question is about tomorrow. We don't have exact time frame, Chloe. So in the meantime, we know it'll be in the coming days. So I can send you more details on where to direct parents and caregivers for more information. Our website will be the most up-to-date kind of go-to resource for everyone. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Chloe, appreciate your question. Um, Robin with Fox 46. Hi, Dr. Ahmed. Um, thank you so much for taking our questions. I um, wanted to ask a little bit about um, weight and differences. You know, there is a big difference between the weight of a five-year-old versus an 11-year-old. And for doses, um, I understand that uh, the children's vaccines are about a third of the dose for adults. Um, but if you've got a five-year-old or an 11-year-old, like I said, big weight difference. So should parents who have kids that are, you know, underweight, lower weight or age, um, maybe not even matching the weight, um, should they be more worried about side effects? Um, you know, if, if they have a child that's underweight. Those are great questions. And those are questions that have been circulating around for a, a while now. So the way that we do pediatric studies in general, as you know, is we sort of do um, sort of back up in age and do these age strata or these age brackets and, and come down to the five-year-old age group and then going down to the two-year-old age group, et cetera. In doing that, and it was very nice that the committee, the advisory committee on immunization practices allows you to see the slides that are presented by Pfizer. And so I could look at the detail slides as well but they did a very nice job early on of differentiating between 10 versus 20 versus the 30 microgram dose and, and found that the 10 microgram would be sufficient for generating an immune response. Then when they looked at these children and what's, what's thrown out there is 2000 children were involved, 2200 children were involved, but in the end there were actually a total of 4,500 children involved when you looked at all the phases of the study that Pfizer did in this age group. And so there were 4,500 in these various age brackets, and then they broke down their data, both with safety and immunogenicity into different age brackets so that you could see that the five to nine-year-old had the same response as the nine to 11-year-old in terms of both safety as well as in terms of the immune response. So the immune response was as good as for adults, whether you were in that younger age bracket of the five to 11 or the older age bracket, meaning lighter versus heavier, and then the safety was the same. And then they also went ahead and compared the safety in this five to 11 year old age group to the 12 to 17 year old age group that was approved earlier and showed in terms of reactions, local reactions, local reactions meaning pain or swelling or redness at the site of the injection. Those were a little bit more common in the younger age group than the older age group, meaning 12 to 17. And, but the systemic side effects, meaning the fatigue or the headache that happens after the second dose, those, those were less common. And, and they did do a good job of breaking down that five to 11 year old age group into smaller age groups, age brackets, so that you could see that it didn't make a difference what the age was or what the weight was, or the implication being what the weight was. They didn't break it down by weight, but. They Thanks for being patient with us. Uh, apparently some audio issues and it cut everything off. We deal with this from time to time. Uh, so it's just one of those things, uh, living in the technical world and the technical, um, I guess, atmosphere that we're in now. I do want to uh, say thank you again to Dr. Amina Ahmed. Dr. Amina Ahmed, the pediatric infectious disease expert and epidemiologist at Atrium Health Levine's Children's Hospital. Uh, some great information. I will go back and post this uh, on my page to complete conversation as well. That way, for anyone looking for information about uh, or have questions or a little bit of uneasiness, and of course, it's unfamiliar, so um, I can understand, and we want to be even more cautious when it comes to our babies. I certainly get it. Um, vaccine.org. 
vaccine.org, vaccine.gov, excuse me, vaccine.gov is the place to check out if you are looking for where to get your child vaccinated and uh, your doctor's office may not offer it. Mecklenburg County Public Health can help you as well as you can go to um, StarMed. They are booking appointments and you can also, uh, uh, Groundwater Solutions is another place and it is vaccines.gov with an S, vaccines.gov. So excuse me, I'm trying to like, totally confuse you v-a-c-c-i-n-e-s dot gov vaccines dot gov that's where you can go to find out where your child as young as five can get vaccinated a couple other updates uh before we close out mecklenburg county will stop requiring you to wear a mask indoors this is huge and it starts on november 14th and the reason it is huge and is so encouraging the county's test positivity rate is dropped below five percent for a week and so that's some great progress folks uh, give yourselves a pat on the back is because of the hard work the county commissioners have now voted to drop the mask mandate once that benchmark was reached and so the goal has been accomplished you can also now go to charlotte mecklenburg libraries and pick up a free COVID test to take at home that's quite convenient and it's a great idea especially heading into the holiday season again Charlotte Mecklenburg Library is providing COVID tests that you can take at home. The county wants to make testing easier for you and the mask, mon the mask mon mandate rather having that lifted is one. And uh, for anyone that's struggling to make an appointment online, this is an alternative for you. But certainly uh, if you need to reach out and you want to make sure you're doing this correctly, we've got several great resources. MetCountyNC.gov or you can give them a call um, as well as Groundwater Solutions, and then, of course, StarMed Health. And if you work for a company with 100 or more employees, you'll have to be fully vaccinated by January 4th, so shortly after the first of the year, or get tested for COVID weekly. It seems like a fair balance to me. Uh, people that are against the vaccine uh, apparently don't see it that way. But testing weekly, uh, we had Nicole Campbell on this week. She has no problem with it, and she gets tested every week and uh, that's the spirit of unity the spirit of, of us getting back to uh where we can at least have a new norm is what i can appreciate and um that's the new federal law the federal rules that uh, was issued on yesterday and i'm sure it's going to be enforced i did see a report that it's expected that we will finally get out of this pandemic by the end of 2022 so there is now at least some type of uh target date um a whole nother year but what the heck we've suffered already through um two years and so one more year i think we can handle that as well um it's time for me to move out of the way of course uh happy friday to you uh we've got the chill in the air around here but make sure you get out and make it a great weekend if you didn't join my sunday show i announced on sunday i am no longer at streets i did my last show uh this past sunday i've got an announcement that will be forthcoming on my next step. So I'll share that with you real soon. Um, but as always, life's challenges make you better, not bitter. I'm Tanya Rivens. You can still go to my website, tanyarivens.com and submit at Canceling COVID. I still have a few more gift cards for you. Again, Canceling COVID, once you go to tanyarivens.com and submit, even if it's your thoughts on uh, whether you or not you're going to get your child vaccinated, I'd love to hear from you. We've got these gift cards that have been donated. So it's just a great idea to distribute them to none other than you guys who support canceling COVID. You've been there for us all year. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. And remember together, we are making progress to cancel COVID. <laughs>